is our virtual space. This is the virtual world where we have class. And I'm going to show you some of the locations we've created for this negotiation class. Now, I've covered some of the issues of recording students, recording lectures. That was the beginning of the semester. And then maybe the first half of the semester, I record my lectures. But then very quickly, after a few weeks, we begin to get students coming into the virtual world so they practice. And as you can see, this is one of the first places we enter. We have a bus depot, and what I've designed here is a series of buses that go to different locations. Today we're just showing the negotiation bus that will go to the negotiation campus. So let me go show you some places there. Students would normally enter here, and there'll be avatars, as here you can see this is my avatar. So when I'm in class, this is actually the avatar I use. So I'm going to follow this avatar, me, around in the virtual world and show you some of the locations we're using for negotiation. Let's go ahead. Here we've entered the negotiation campus and as you can see we have a number of buildings here so why don't we look around and look at each building and see what the potential is. Follow me. Right over here we have a glass building. This is one of the really cool features of Open Wonderland is we can make these transparent glass. It does use up a lot of memory and we've had to cut it down somewhat, but here's a really good example of a meeting room. We could actually simulate having meetings inside of this space. We could simulate business meetings, negotiation meetings, we could do almost anything here. So this is one of the first places we design for meetings. And we have a number of locations on this campus, a warehouse, another meeting building with rooms. I'm going to take you to each one, but maybe it would be best to get an overview from the air. So follow me, we're going to go up into the air. Now the avatars can fly, they just use page up, page down to fly around. And you can see here's a nice overview of the campus, so let me point pieces out one by one. We were just down in the glass meeting room down there, and that has a helicopter behind it. And that helicopter actually will transport students to another location. We also have a warehouse location where we can actually simulate warehouse equipment and shipping and channel events. We have another building in all glass over there. We originally designed a high rise but it does get difficult for students' computers, memory and CPUs to handle a lot of transparency so we've reduced that. That's actually where I have class inside of that glass building. We also have an auditorium further over there and we're building a, 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 a tiered auditorium so that students can actually listen to lectures while inside there. And of course there's a road going all the way around the campus that you can see. So it's a little tiny a campus but actually gives us lots of opportunity for design. We don't want to have things too complicated, we also don't want to have things too simple. Our research has shown that simple actually works, abstraction actually functions pretty well, it just needs to have the ability that students control their own avatars, control their own space, talk to, each, talk to each other, they really get a lot of feeling of presence and high involvement. But for negotiation and business, we want to have a little bit of a simulation. For tourism, also we want to have a little bit of a simulation of the space. So it's a balance. Too much detail, it's going to be hard, cause trouble for students' computers and servers. Even with advanced machines, this can really slow things down especially things like glass and tall, complicated build buildings. So, why don't we go down and take a look inside. Here is the building where we have classes. So students just follow the pathway down here from where they enter. We're going to go into a large hallway with classrooms. Let's go ahead in. This is the main hallway. As you can see, we're able to simulate things like hotel check-in. We have a check-in desk over there. We have a big fountain and a very large hallway. And then in the back of this hallway, we have entranceways to classrooms. Each classroom is one chapter or one part from the book. So let's go into some of the chapters. We have escalators coming down into the chapter or the part of the book. And then we have doorways here all the way around 360 degrees. And each doorway is one section or one smaller subpart of the part or chapter of the book. So students come in, they come down the escalator. When they want to leave, they go up that escalator there. And during class, we go into these different rooms, each room having a piece of the book. So let's go take a look. Now each part of the book, we actually can show on these monitors up here. And they're just basically graphics put on to kind of 
imitation monitors and look like monitors, nothing live, nothing so CPU intensive, fairly simple. It's just that each room that you move through has another piece of the book, another piece of the lecture. So in this way, the important key is I don't just sit and talk the whole time from one position, although I do do some of that, but what I do is I keep students moving. So they move around in this space, they come from the big hall, they move into these smaller rooms, and then as I finish a point, a small point, then I say, okay, let's go to the next room. And by doing that, it keeps students active, keeps them interested to keep moving forward, to control their avatars and participate. It's also a good way to test who's paying attention, because as you finish with one part of this chapter, you say, let's go to the next room, and everyone moves, but the students who are left behind, obviously they've walked away from their computer, they're not paying attention, or they've fallen asleep, or, or something like that, or they're having technical problems. So these small rooms are small chunks of the information for class, and it's really helpful, I think, to move through these spaces. And basically, we have this 360 degrees for every chapter. You just move through all the rooms, and it goes in a big circle. Eventually, you'd end up right back here that we're looking at. But right over here is room three. That's going to be the dialogue. We will walk in there, and that's the dialogue section. So each room is one subtopic, and it really keeps things moving. Each room has an exit door and as well as the entrance door. And then opposite of that entrance door, you go to the other side and it goes to the next room. So you have the previous room, the next room, and exiting out to the small hallway where the escalators are. So there's a real nice flow to it. Here we are back at the escalator. So we're gonna go ahead and exit by going up the escalator. You just enter and then we'll be back in the main hallway. I think my avatar is getting a little bit tired out. He's sitting down. You can see how really interesting this is. You can see out the windows, we have a, a panorama right outside the design. In reality, these rooms are not connected. They are separate spaces within the virtual world of Open Wonderland. When you open a door, you go through a door, it teleports you to another location. But the point is, for the students, there's a nice illusion of flow. And for here, this nice big room, now we're gonna go out and try a little bit more uh, application, that is, this is kind of the lecture section of the class. This is where we get students together, we flow into the chapter for the day, the topic. I give some lecture, but I keep students moving just to stop them from getting too bored or turned off. And then later in the semester, we're gonna start going to some other places that cause some more interest. So let's take a look at that now. What we have here is a dock, obviously a simulated dock, and it's on two islands. And the reason we're using the island metaphor is each group can have an island. So the island helps students to learn that they can move their avatars, they can stay in one area with their group members. It also helps teach them how to move somewhere to get to another location. This is pretty obvious, right? You walk down this uh, dock, get to the boat at the end, and it transports you to another location. So this is a great teaching tool, a little bit simplistic and abstract, but by beginning the semester with the more abstract, it makes it easier later when we get a little bit more complicated. Now here we are, we've taken the boat, and we go to another kind of dock area. And what you can see over there are the small entryways. Each one has a boat, and each one goes to a group. It has group one, group two, group three. If by taking that boat, the avatars would be transported to, to their islands. So group one would go to island one, group two would go to island two. And if you can see out there, if you look out at the horizon, you can see the islands floating out there, and above them are numbers floating in the sky. Those numbers help students to see that each island is a number. Again, it's a little bit abstract, but it's a great learning tool to begin to help students understand how they can form groups, use groups within geographical locations, and how to get there. Let's go to one of the islands. All right, we're out on the island. My avatar is gonna sit down and take it easy for a little while. You can see that we have a boat here. That boat will take me back. And you can see in the background over there, we have group number eight, and then over there is group number 10. This is a great way that students can see that the other groups are there. There's another key point to learning in this kind of design. And that is students can very clearly see there's a distance. They can walk on water, they can fly. So there's nothing to stop them from going over to the other islands. But what this helps them learn is, that as you move away inside this space, inside this virtual world, the sound gets less and less. Students are very used to using teleconferencing, Skype, and uh, Facebook, and things like this, and their cell phones. 
So they kind of expect that when they talk, everyone will hear them. So this is a great way to teach them that they can move around and as they move further away, the volume will get lower until you cannot hear someone very quickly. And as you move closer, you can hear them. So this is a place I like to begin the semester at, a little bit abstract, but a very good learning for movement, for groups, and for understanding audio. We get a nice real overview. We're up on one of the island's numbers. And you can see the other islands out there in the water and you can see the dock area where the boats are. So we can go back there by boat and those boats will take us back to the negotiation campus. It's pretty neat. Let's head back to the campus and let me show you another location, a little bit more uh, business oriented, a little bit more complicated. Just to show you, we can fly around, so I'm going to follow my avatar in the sky here. You can see, once we get moving fast, the avatars can jump all around. Ooh. The next location we're going to go to is the actual place where I simulate negotiations. So by having students learn some of these lessons and listening to lectures, we're now going to move on to the actual simulation space where we do our negotiation practices. And to do that, we're going to take this helicopter right here. Let's go. Here we are in the place where I actually do my simulations for negotiations. You can see the helicopter way over there is where we've arrived. If we want to go back to the main campus, we just take that helicopter and so we'll walk over there. You can see the spaces we created. Each group has one of these glass buildings. Now there is some good reason for doing it this way. Number one, to have the buildings is key. We're much closer than we are in the islands before. The islands was a way to learn how to make groups, uh, how to form groups in the virtual space, how to find your own space, how to visit other groups. But what we have here is a real negotiation situation, so we need groups a little bit easier to contact each other. And walking around on water and flying through the sky is not exactly convincing. So what we have here are locations that look like office meeting spaces, office rooms, or little tiny buildings. That's pretty cool. But one of the advantages of Open Wonderland is if you walk into these buildings, we've created what we call a cone of silence, or what Wonderland calls a cone of silence. So as you walk into the building, as soon as you walk through the door, no one outside can hear what's being said inside. Totally isolated. This allows each group to make their secret plans and to give their confidential information to each other without anyone being able to spy on them from outside. Key point in negotiation. Also the glass. Why do we use the glass? These glass facades here allow students to see is there anybody inside. And you can see from the other side, each group is able to see every other group if someone is inside their group's office. The buildings are labeled very clearly with large numbers like 1 and 2 and 3. And so students in group 3 can just look out and see is there anyone over in room 4. And students can send people out to negotiate while keeping one person back. We could also use this to simulate service encounters with customers, department stores, many things like this related to business, which would be very difficult in the actual classroom, physical classroom. So this is really, really awesome. Let's go into one of these rooms and take a look. If you watch the video of our students interacting, you can see these rooms very clearly. I just want to click, quickly show you. We have a whiteboard, we have tables, we could have chairs. We can make the whiteboards interactive. We could have class here. Students could have class. You could break students up into smaller groups and they could have a class, uh, a group leader who's teaching something. It's great for negotiation because they could actually sit here and plan a negotiation. So I think you get the idea of the flow now. What we've done is we've created a way to begin. Uh, we try to hold students at the very beginning just in an open space up in the sky. 
And then from there we move on to a bus terminal, learning that you can move your avatar around, you can teleport to some place. And then from the bus terminal we go on to a campus. And then you can navigate around the campus and see there's different possibilities. And then inside the campus we move into hallways where students can learn to move around and interact with each other and to talk to each other. And then we move into classrooms where we can have lectures. The key point is don't let students sit around too long because they'll get bored and tired. You want to have some movement. So we have very small segments of class moving through the spaces, moving through the rooms. It's a little bit of trouble to design. Think about it. If you have a book with 10 chapters and you break those chapters into 10 sections, that's 100 of those little rooms. Luckily, you can use a lot of copying of designs and repeat, but still, you do have to invest that time, and that's what we have here. Then we move on to more complicated things, having students be more independent, more motivated, a little bit more doing their own thing. How do we do that? Through traveling on boats to islands, giving them their own personal learning space, and then maybe practicing visiting other groups a little bit. And then finally we come to this kind of setup where we have a much more higher fidelity uh, simulation of negotiation. In this case, it could be tourism, it could be management, but for this class, negotiation. I think it's really important for the, each group to have their own space, to keep their secrets, to make their plans, but also to feel more participated inside the process, more in control of the process. Okay, so that kind of sums up what we've been doing in this space, the 3D space.